What's up, YouTube? It's Mountain Metal Anthony here with another repair video for you. So I'm excited to show you this one because this one kind of brings me back to my roots, brings me back to why I got into this industry. And uh, the man who originally got me to fix his equipment, which if you've seen it in some of my videos before, you'll know is my dad. My dad is a collector of all things that are fucked up and shitty. Not that he doesn't have some good stuff, but yeah, you can see he likes old broke down shit. Which is probably why you can guess why I like old broke down shit. But anyway, my very first repair that I ever did, something that's still holding on to this day, which I'm pretty proud of because it was like 10 years ago, is on this excavator right over here. Okay, let's get here up on his pile. This is actually a septic pile, believe it or not. It's just kind of gross, but whatever. Uh, okay. And there it is. You can see, still on there, that roller. That roller right there fell off oh look looks like that one fell off he hasn't called me to fix it i don't think this machine leaves this pile anymore i think he just uses it to load and unload his truck anymore but yeah there it is my very first repair now normally i'd go sticking my hands in there and like try to wipe it down for you guys but like i said i'm on a pile of septic sand so all right so this is today's culprit this is what we're working on today this is just a budget repair. This is just a machine, as you can see, it's, it's whooped. He just uses this thing to dig septics out. He doesn't need it to be super tight and he really doesn't care because it's this is a throwaway machine to him. He paid, I think, five grand for this thing. So for him to throw some excessive amount of money into it, it's not worth it. Nothing looks wrong to me. I have no idea why you want me to fix it. So what you see me doing here is just cutting some of the bolts off instead of having to sit there with a wrench because we're replacing them anyway and burning the grease out. Whenever I do pin and bushing jobs, I always burn the grease. Unfortunately, I left my impact at home, so by hand it is. Now that we have the quick connect off, we need to go steal the quick connect off of his other machine. And that one seems to be less worn. They must have blown the motor up or set it on fire or whatever before they really got a chance to beat the hell out of it. Believe it or not, these machines are only 2018s. Yeah. Um, and no, my dad is not the guy who beat these machines like this. He bought them from a local, another local septic company. But two machines for six grand. How can you go wrong? Especially with a couple of Kubota motors in them, those little three cylinders. Probably worth the motors alone. But uh, of course my dad loves old junk. So uh, he's gonna put the other one into service cause it's just what the man does. Look at that. I ain't never seen that before. Nice. And this pin ain't bad, honestly. It's not great. You see we got a little bit of waller in there. A little bit of a high spot, but it's not awful. We might reuse that pin versus the other one. It just depends on which one's better. We did get two new pins for the machine, two new bushings, but he didn't want to splurge and do all of them because it would have been, you know, three, two, three, two to $3,000. He didn't want to spend two to $3,000 on a $6,000 machine. And can you really blame him?
like I said, this this machine was set on fire pretty early in its life, so it never really got a chance to take the beating like the other one did. But it did take enough of uh, a beating for this. That's crazy. But these seem okay. And except for that, that bushing's no good. Well, let me see if maybe we can get that bushing. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. But the quick connect side of things looks a lot better on this one. You got a little bit of wear here, but not nearly as much as the one that's on the other machine. But yeah, you can see this machine was set on fire at some point. Yeah, but like I said, three cylinder Kubota, so, and it supposedly runs. This just won't start because the wiring harness is melted. All right, let's get over to the other machine and uh move the truck back over there and we'll start getting that thing cut apart and ready to go get new pins in it What I'm doing is I'm just taking the best parts from each machine and using them. So I thought maybe the dog bone from over there would be better, but I was wrong. The bushing is still intact on this dog bone, whereas the bushing on this one is broken. So this one's going to go to the scrap pile and even the bushings down here, they look a little bit better on this one. So we'll throw this over in the scrap pile. Um, maybe he'll save it and then just get another bushing for it and then use this as a backup, but I doubt it. Um, and then the dog bones, these look pretty good. This is the one I just pulled. Here's the one off the other machine. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet, but as far as this side goes, I think it's gonna come down to whichever one has less worn out ears. Let's get this thing the rest of the way apart, and then we're going to cut our main bushing off here. So you can see it's uh, shaped like an oval now. All right, so here's our new pins and bushings. So you can see he made the pins greasable as opposed to the bushing on this one. We're going to need to cover up. We're going to need to extend that, then cover it so we don't blow the seals out inside of the cylinder. So let's do that. All right, so the first little loop of the day we're getting thrown for. The machine's decided it doesn't want to start again. Um, it sounds like a battery because it's just clicking. But I came over here to the battery cables. So you can see how loose that is. So I'll try to, you know. I'm not here to play mechanic, so I'm just trying to get it running again. Okay, so this just isn't going to... I mean, it's literally not even... None of it's tight. So it's just like, uh, I mean, oh, none of it's tight. So I'm gonna have to fix this. Now that we got the piston to where I want it before I cut into it, now we're going to go ahead and officially take the battery, out, not out of the machine, but off. We're going to take it off, and, and luckily he has this quick little deal. I did manhandle it down because I didn't want to deal with any more loose batteries. Anyway, so now we have the battery disconnected. We're going to go there and start our tor torch work. I've seen a lot of guys do repairs where they cut these ends off of cylinders and they never wrap the uh, chrome shaft and the reason you should do that is because if you get anything that lands into this 
not that this is some beauty show or some great machine or whatever, but what'll happen is um, if you get like a BB that gets stuck up in here and it keeps running in and out of the seals, you're gonna have leaky seals all the time and you're never really gonna be able to fix that correctly. So it's better just to wrap your cylinders. So what I'll try to do is just cover where the cylinder, until where the cylinder stops. We'll throw a couple of, uh, couple of zip ties on it just to hold it in place. And that's, that's the main reason I keep this apron with me is to cover things. Um, I really don't wear it a lot. It's more just to cover what my work piece is. I'd rather burn up the $30 apron than fuck up the $500 cylinder. Here I'm just beveling the piston out so that way I can get it ready for welding and then I'm going to go ahead and start preheating the bushing to make it easier to cut. And what I've been trying to do is, if you look closely, is cut into the existing bushing and instead of the uh, stick. So that way, um, I know that I'm not taking any meat away from this and everything should align properly when I put this back together. So the reason I'm having such a hard time with this and it's taking me such a while to cut this thing off and I didn't realize it at the time is that it's actually welded on the inside. There's a strip of metal connecting the two bushings on the inside and they're both MIG welded it appeared. So after a little bit more work, um, I'm able to pop this thing off but I actually have to cut down into the bushing through the bushing and, and then it pops off. So we just need to clean this up now, clean that up, and then uh, prep and re-weld. But you can see this had been done before. Uh, somebody was using 7018 or maybe 8018 on it. Not the prettiest torch cutting out there, but when you're taking shit apart like this, it doesn't really matter. It's more when you're putting it back together, you need to get a little prettier. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, clean this up. So we've got it beveled out. Um, I might bevel it deeper through those welds, but I stopped there because that's kind of where the plate is, the backing plate uh, that's in there. So I'm assuming that's kind of where it, it was originally and this guy just threw some extra, extra passes along this thing. 
So there we are, we're all beveled out. I'm gonna come back with the grinder, buff all this out. And again, we still need to prep this out here. And uh, we'll take our measurements from here, align our pin, weld it in our, our bushing, align it, weld it in solid, and then weld that one, get everything back together, and that should be good. All right, guys, you missed me prepping it out. You didn't miss much. Um, this camera's a piece of shit, so that's why I didn't catch I ground it all out. It's looking pretty good. I got all the old weld off, because once I got in there, I seen where this backing plate was, and clearly they used that to align the pin originally, um, or the bushing, I mean. I don't know why I keep calling it a pin. So uh, what I'm going to do is take this ratchet strap and ratchet strap the bushing in place and just hook it somewhere up there on the on the boom. So that's one of the ways that I, I use to hold these bushings in place. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but when you don't have somebody to hold it up or a good way to um, get it in place, this works. Um, I've also used like a jack stand before. That works pretty well. But uh, yeah, this will do. That's probably it right there. All right, now I'm gonna remove the ratchet strap and just check all my measurements before I weld it solid. with it a little undercut but uh it's not a big deal when you're dealing with equipment it, that doesn't i mean you always want to try to watch undercut but and not get it and this is the only place i got undercut was in the front of the bushing the sides are all nice and clean the bottom is nice and clean no undercut but right here we got a little bit so what i'm going to do is just grind in there a little bit i'm not going to grind it all the way out there's no reason to and i'm going to go ahead and make my second and then third pass all the way around this thing and then we're going to be good there and then we'll move on to that bushing. good we ended up with four passes instead of three um, I just felt like it it looked better it looked 
looked like that's what it needed so it's not perfect by any means um those welds are good enough to pass any weld test i'm positive of that fully penetrating because i beveled it out i watched a keyhole um but yeah so you know and when it comes to equipment welding i mean look where we are this isn't a booth okay so you know you do the best you can with what you can you clean it up the best you can and uh, lay, you lay it down most of the times i would have started with a 6010 root um but because i got in and behind what i was cutting out and re-welding in i opted for just going straight 7018 all the way out i normally wouldn't do that but in this application it seemed acceptable and it turned out pretty good um didn't have any porosity that i could see no pinholes um we did have a little undercut on that first pass and i think it was because our bevel was way uneven and i really well just wasn't pushing enough stick into it and honestly i think i could have been a touch hotter on the root uh maybe 135 instead of 130 but we did um the root at 130 we did another, our second pass at 135. We did our third pass at 140, and it was too hot. Um, so I bumped it down to 135 again and finished it out, and that seemed to be perfect. All right, guys. So now we just need to clean that um, piston up and then uh, get our, what's it called on? Our quick connect. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and weld that out and then put everything back together. What I do to balance is I'm pulling it crooked so that way I can grab my pin and hopefully slip this all in and have to go to the ground with it. Okay, why is that pin so much longer? And it's gonna rain. Not good. All not good. All at once, not fucking good. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut a circle out and we're gonna cut an inside circle and we're gonna slip it over and then weld it along this edge. That's gonna make this side's retainer. And then on this side, we're gonna grind a flat spot, drill a hole through and put a bolt through here. And that's gonna be this side's retainer. And then what we're gonna do is then cut this down because it does not need to be this long but I guess longer is better than shorter. And then, yep, we'll be good there. So you wanna keep it simple, right? Um, I had this uh, socket in the truck. Happens to be exactly the size I need pretty much. I mean, a little off, but it doesn't really matter. We're not doing rocket science. And we're just gonna give that a trace. So again, found something to trace. Just gonna eyeball it. There's no reason to get all fucking super technical. Oops. And then we'll give it a trace. It's definitely not the best. Definitely not the worst. Started reassembling. Sorry, I forgot to film it. And this is the last dog bone to go on. These are my grease gloves. Always have a pair of those if you're in this uh, industry. All right. So we're going to bolt this together and uh, yeah, it's missing some shims for sure. But I think whenever this was serviced last, they lost the shims. I don't have them. Um, I'm going to make my dad aware like, hey, listen, we need to get some shims for that thing. Take it apart, slip them in. And I will be disassembling this before I do my final welds because I'm not going to be able to get all the way around this thing.
figure out way to, how to hold the pin in once you get it done. Mm -hmm. You said the, the pin holder. Once you put the quick connect back on it. Oh, I put that, and then this side I'm just going to put a bolt through, because look, your quick connect, see where it touches? Ow, look. It touches, just see how it touches all the way, two-thirds of it? Yeah. So I'm just going to put a bolt through it. That's all I can do. Yeah, just put a bolt through this. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to cut this shorter. Yeah, you leave it sticking out. Don't know. But, and then I put this on the as the retainer on this side. Yeah. This is what I replace. Oh, you fix all of this? Yeah, it's new. Oh. You got a new pin in it there, and you're gonna you got a new bushing here. I just need to grind this out and then weld that all the way around. Okay, and the bushing inside of here is new, or is that this, a? This oh, is you a, just cut the whole thing off and put a whole new. Yeah, you got the whole the things over here. Oh. Yeah, I do that all. I do this shit all, all the time. This is how I always do with all pins and bushings. Oh, there you go. Just cut the whole board. fucking thing off. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. You just cut into the bushing. Yep. And you don't got to worry about it. Cool. And then the, this doesn't matter because you are you 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 have because you can see where you're. I, I tried to keep protected as much as I could, but you see that blue line there? Mm -hmm. This is where your piston bottoms out anyway. Yeah, it's like a ball. So you could lose up to an inch off this, and it don't matter. Yeah, that's enough weld on that. No, ain't not. No, it's not done. Okay. That's why I needed that piece that's so your, I could get all the way around it. Step on your wire, you're gonna pull it's my it. My lead, yeah. No. Yeah, it's gonna fucking break it. No. Okay. down the reason I did that was I wanted to make sure that we didn't have any porosity all the way through which we don't we're clear there and I also wanted to even it out because I made a few mistakes while I was trying to weld that small circumference for me this is the hardest thing to do stick weld small circumference stuff because it's just hard to get your wrist to turn well for me that one was a little better So I'm going to do one more dry assembly before final assembly and grease just to make sure everything lines up. It's all square and straight. Most people would stop before this assembly and just grease this out and be done with it. But quite frankly, I don't want to have to take it apart and be covered with grease again. So I'm just going to check it now, make sure everything's right and sand it afterwards. All right, YouTube, I got this thing finished out. I got it greased up. It's ready to go. Um, I didn't film that, but that's what I did today. I'm sure you guys know how to do a basic grease job. It's not difficult. So she's all put together. She's painted with the paint he had here. That's what he asked for. He says you're gonna get this whole thing sandblasted and painted anyway. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's see how much slop this thing still has in it. because we used a used quick connect it's because we didn't replace all the pins it's because we didn't uh well really just need to replace some pins because all the other bushings that i didn't touch still seem good um also if you'll notice the bushing right here in uh, or maybe it's just the pin but this is also bad so i believe the main pin is bad too uh for the arm so i mean you know it is what it is like i said paid four grand for it what are you gonna do, right? He got both of them for six. So you're not, you're not gonna go and put $20,000 in this machine, which is what it would need to make it brand new. He just cares that it digs, and I can't express that enough, because I know some of you guys are gonna be like, oh, the slump's not out of that. Well, no shit. 
he also didn't pay me nearly what you would have to pay to get all those pins and bushings redone if you got them line honing board or if you just got them uh, replaced like what I did. You know, I know the line honing board guys are getting, I think, $400 a hole and $300 to show up, so $700 right there. So, all right, we're balling on a budget here. Anyway. If you like what you saw here today, if you like my video, give me a like, a subscribe, a share. Tell your friends about me. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Keep dragging rod, keep pushing MIG. All right? Have a great day. Hey. Red and green.